My name is Ryan Quillette. I'm the Product Development Manager. And today we're going to be covering Vibration View Report Builder. This has been a long time in the making, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Let's first cover our core values really quickly. Collaboration, capable and competent, accountable and responsible, strong and driven worth ethic, do the right thing, and innovation. And I think that you're going to see a few of these values in the software I show today. So what is Vibration View Report Generator, Report Builder? It's a what you see is what you get uh, word processor that's built into Vibration View so you do not have to have a separate program to create reports like we've done in prior versions of the software. Templates that you create update live so you can see real values in place of template codes. Uh, the report file also includes embedded template, and that makes it easy to take an existing report file that you have and reuse it as a template going forward. And one of the coolest features, you can now drag and drop graphs and you can resize those graphs with height, and so on, and they will live update to the new size. The other big change is a new report parameters window. So this replaces our old one. And what you can do with the new one is you can search for things in the search box at the bottom that will sort down or filter down the list of items uh, in our large list of parameters that are available in the software. And you can also choose what items you want to copy to the flipboard or, or have for drag and drop. And that's what the copy columns is here when you click the settings button next to search. So if I want to uh, copy description and the code, um, then I would turn on description and code. If I just want the code, then I turn off description. It also supports multiple select. So I could take all of the results that you see here and I could shift select from top to bottom and copy all of these codes in batch into my report or onto my graph. There's a new syntax for Report Builder. Uh, we're going away from param in, in the report context and moving to doc variable. So in practice, what that means is where you would have typed param colon channel one before, you'll now type doc variable space channel one. And a lot of this stuff, you might not need to know because with the new report builder, you can work in a, in a mode where you never have to look at the uh, underlying variables. But I do wanna point this out to the power users and the, and the existing users that are used to the param syntax that we use. Form would go to doc variable and then bracket form colon. So this is how a form would work. And then a new improvement in 2024 is uh, multi-line, multi-column parameters using the uh, star and then vertical bar syntax. So this lets you do something like channel name star, which will be channel name one, channel name two, channel name three for each row, and then channel star and then uh, in-band RMS star, I'll show you what this looks like. It's not going to make a lot of sense just looking at the text here. But what's great about it is if you have a, a four-channel system, this will put in four rows with these with these variables. If you have a 16-channel system, it'll put in 16 rows for you automatically, all with just one line. We also have a new file format. Uh, the reports are now docx format, not RTF format. Uh, Vibration View can open any docx file, so you don't actually need to have Microsoft Office installed on the computer anymore. Uh, this also means any kind of document fi file. Um, Vibration View can open it, which is, is useful on uh, lab PCs where we're, we probably don't want to spend the extra money for a dedicated Office license. VV template 
is the new file format for our templates, and that replaces .rtf. And you can upgrade RTF templates to VV template easily. All you have to do is do report edit template and then upgrade a legacy template. Any docx report created by Vibration View has the report template embedded inside of it. I mentioned that earlier. So what that means is you can take a docx report that you created with our report builder, and you can actually go ahead and reuse that as your template for new tests. And just a really nice little uh, finishing touch. Uh, when you're finished with your report, you can save it as a docx file or you can use export and then save it as a PDF file with one click. Okay, so I have a test here, it's a random test. And let's go ahead and put up, put up a few more channels so it's a little more interesting. And I will also put up one more graph, again, just to make this a little bit more interesting to look at in our report. Uh, we'll do transmissibility. All right, so I've got two graphs, and I'm going to go ahead and finish my test and then click the report button. And that will bring up our report builder. So in our report builder, uh, it looks like typical kind of uh, Word editor. Um, the default templates have all been upgraded from, from prior uh, releases to be a little bit more modern, um, but it still has the same content that you're used to seeing. So first of all, you're going to get each of your graphs. And I mentioned earlier that you can resize these. So if I want this graph to be larger or smaller, I can just resize it and then it will live update. So it's one of those things that you know, kind of feels intuitive and obvious, uh, but that is not something that we could have done before. And now you get that with Report Builder. Going down here, we've got a breakpoint table, um, measurements listed here. And this was a four channel system, so I get four of the channels listed. Calibration details, I'm in demonstration mode, so it's not listing anything for calibration. And then you also get the event log, which I think is a very important addition to the default templates that we have here. So that is how this works. Um, I could go down here at the bottom and I could go to report tab, report parameters. And then let's say I want to bring in all the analyzer parameters. I could shift select these. And then if I drag them over, they get dropped in all in batch like that. And then another thing that I like to point out, select this range here. And then at the tab stop bar, we go up here and say, I'll put a tab stop at four inches. And then that aligns everything very nicely. What you can do from here too, is you can do show codes. And then this shows what a lot of us veterans to making reports are used to seeing, which is essentially those param codes or what they are now is doc variable codes. So I've got doc variable analysis algorithm doc variable analysis DOF, and then I can toggle that back to what the actual value is. So that's what's so cool about Report Builder is you can work in just seeing the result and never have to, having to see the codes, but if you want to see the codes, you can do that too. I do wanna show you um, what I think is one of the other really cool features of this new report builder, and that's the automatic um, number of channels based on how many channels you have in this system defined. So as I said before, I have a four channel system right now. That's why I have four channels listed here. If I do show codes on this line, you'll see that that was all defined by this one line, right? Every time you see a star in the stock variable, that means insert one, insert two, you know, channel one, channel two, and it'll do that for as many channels as you have defined in Vibration View. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go back to Vibration View, 
And because this is demonstration mode, I can change the number of channels on it easily. So I'm going to change it to a 16 channel system. So I'll just do it like that. Vibration View reconfigures itself for 16 channels. If I go to input configuration, you can see I have 16 channels. So I'll start my imaginary test again. And let's add in our extra channels here for good measure. Good, good. I'll let that come up to level. I'll stop the test and then I'll make a report and then I'll show you that we get all 16 channels in our report and it's the same template. So I'll click report now. And there it is. This is what I was talking about. So that one line that has the star in it, it automatically fills down for the number of channels that I have defined. Huge time saver. I can't tell you the number of people I've seen that make a four channel report template and an eight channel report template and so on and so on. I think this will solve your problem. So that is that. Let's go ahead and customize our template. I think that this is a very common uh, thing that we like to do. Um, let's see, what could I do for a customization? Um, let's say I don't want calibration details, just as an example. So I'll delete this, this whole section, calibration details. And let's say I want to include all of the analysis parameters that were used for the transfer functions. So I'll go to report parameters here. If you look at the top, all of these top ones are analyzer parameters. So I'll just select these. This is the same example as I did before. I'll drag them over. Again, I'll highlight this section and I'll put in a tab stop at four inches, which gets that all aligned. So at this point, I've created my report. This is what the report template that I want to use by default going forward. So I'm going to save this. And the next thing I'm going to do, this is important, is I'm going to save this report as a template file. So I'll save it as a template. If I save it in this special name, this test report name right here, that is the default uh, test template. For random, and that will be true for all of the test modes. But, so if I, if I save it as test report, go ahead and hit save, overwrite. Now, when I close this, get rid of this one too. If I create a whole new report, it's going to use my new test report template that I just saved. And what you'll see is I don't have any calibration details listed in here. And I do have my uh, algorithm settings listed here, my analyzer settings. And another common thing you might want to do is edit the header, change out this for your own company logo, and you would just do the same process that I just did, where I save this as the default template, uh, the test report template. And now every time I run a random test, it will automatically use my new template with my new, with my company logo at the header. A question that people have asked is, hey, report builder is great. I really like it, but I also want to know, can I, can I still use my old report templates? Does all that still work? And the answer is yes. So let me show you how to do that. So if I right click on report, I can do, um, let's see here, more templates. And I can change this to RTF. And let's do this one. OK, and then it's saving it as an RTF report. Go ahead and save. And at that point, we created the, a report using the legacy, we're calling it RTF report uh, tool. It did not use the new tool at all. This is the, again, the example I have of, hey, can I, can I continue to run my reports the same way I always have? And the answer is yes. Uh, doing it the way I just said, 
And the other way you can do that is you can change the default uh, action that uh, runs when you click the report button. You can say uh, classic report, for instance, um, and then you can browse to your uh, RTF file. OK, so no worries there. Um, I'm not going to show it, but you can also open up your old RTF templates directly uh, and we'll upgrade them to the new uh, format. So you can easily take your old templates and move them forward. I will say, I think it is probably a good idea to start with the new templates that we have provided with the software because the new templates have all of the new uh, automatic channel um, row feature implemented and a few other things. So uh, I, would, I would start there and then probably copy and paste my, uh, my, my customized template into this new one. So with that, I'm gonna end the webinar. Uh, that is Report Builder.